the research I'm going to be telling you about today really began with one very simple question. And that question is, how is gratitude different than just feeling happy, right? Just feeling awesome. This guy's feeling really awesome. Um, so when your um, car breaks down and you have to pull over to the side of the road because it overheated, you know, what's different about when somebody stops to help you than when uh, you just sort of wait for it to cool off and you're very happy and relieved that it started up again? And I think as we reflect on that, we can see that there is something fundamentally different about gratitude. And before I tell you what that answer is about what, what we think gra makes gratitude different, I want to tell you a little bit about human beings. So um, on the left there is a non-human, but we share a lot with those non-humans in that from the moment we're born, we're completely dependent on social connections to survive, right? We, we can't survive without a social connection to someone. And this dependence on social connection um, uh, lasts, you know, throughout childhood, through adolescence and adulthood. And um, so um, just like um, a chimpanzee brain um, is very simple, it has the same exact structures as your brain, the human brain, right? But unlike a chimpanzee that makes very simple representations, um, like their best friend or a banana, you, a human, have a lot more real estate in your brain to make more complex representations, like social justice or art by Banksy, right? And so the answer to that simple question at the beginning about what makes gratitude so kind of fundamentally different than just happiness is this idea that gratitude compels us to give back, right? So in, in sort of the primate model, um, that giving back is social reciprocity, building connections with other people or other, other monkeys, as the case may be. And in human beings, it's about, um, you know, extending back that sharing to someone else. But as I said, you know, human beings have more complex representations. So that reciprocity doesn't just mean um, paying back a favor or a strategic tit-for-tat exchange or um, a hierarchy, um, you know, adjusting your position in a social hierarchy. It's, it's more about um, something bigger, about connection. And gratitude and social connection feel good, right? No, no, they feel great. It feels great to connect with other people. So we wanted to know more about how the brain sort of supports these representations. And when I said that gratitude makes the uh, receiver, the giver, or compels us to give, that giving back can be more than just returning a favor to this person that did something nice for us. If we're grateful to different sorts of institutions, that paying it back or paying it forward towards society can take on more complex and abstract um, uh, forms. So the way I like to think of it is that um, in sort of compelling us to give back, gratitude and altruism are sisters in virtue, right? And, and through this sisterhood, hopefully we can build societies that are complex, but also at their best are cooperative and caring. So how do we put um, giving behavior and altruism uh, to the test? So um, you don't necessarily need a brain scanner for that. Um, this is an a image of Habitat for Humanity. So here's a little experiment we did um, just from asking people how they felt. Um, in this case, we asked um, undergraduates how much volunteering they had done the previous year. And we asked them how satisfied they were with their life today. And not surprisingly, these things are related. We also asked them how grateful they felt. And not surprisingly, gratitude's also related to volunteering and it's related to your life satisfaction. But when we tried to do sort of a linear prediction of um, how to predict the amount of life satisfaction from giving and gratitude, what we find, find is that gratitude completely mediates this relationship between giving and life satisfaction. So in other words, the path to life satisfaction comes from giving through gratitude. So give with, you know, give generously, but do so with a grateful heart to kind of reap these benefits of gratitude. 
Now, we had some ideas, you know, I like to get in there and see what's happening in the brain. We had some ideas of where to look for um, systems that might support gratitude. And so gratitude, as I said, is complex. So it's going to rely on brain systems in, important for cognition, which means thinking and reasoning, as well as um, cognitive control. And this is actually linked to negative affect. So when we're doing something costly, you know, giving by its nature tends to be costly. Um, we're relying on some of these cognitive control regions, but it's also rewarding. So um, in yellow here is the part, part of the reward network. And when I'm talking about reward learning, I'm talking about it in a neuroscience framework, so it just doesn't mean, you know, getting benefits all the time. It's this trade-off between costs and benefits that our brain uses to reward. So there's, it's not that there's all gain and no pain here. And I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about a region of the brain called the midbrain tegmentum. Um, and this part of the brain has these really juicy projections to the rest of the cortex um, of dopamine and serotonin, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. Um, so we're going to focus a little bit more on this midbrain region for our um, brain imaging results. Okay, so I told you we're going to do brain imaging. How do we put Habitat for Humanity into the brain scanner? Um, the, oops, the brain scanner is really small, and it's a huge magnet, so the nails would be a really bad idea. Um, but what we can do is turn to other disciplines like neuroeconomics um, that have come up with some clever ways of looking at giving behavior in sort of an artificial task, which is kind of the best we can do. Um, so I'm, I want you guys to play along with me while we do a, um, a uh, little game where you pretend you're a, und an undergraduate student coming into the lab, and I tell you, thanks for coming, you're going to get paid per hour, but you also earned a $20 bonus just for showing up. And I tell you that there's going to be transfers to your account as w um, that might increase that bonus, but there also might be transfers to a food bank's account. And your job in the scanner is, as these things happen, to tell me how you feel about it. So how would you all feel about an extra $15 bonus? You can just do it in your, in your lap there. Um, press the button for how satisfied you would feel. And then there's also going to be transfers to the food bank. No change to your account. How satisfied would you feel in that situation? We just take away money from your account. Not a great situation, so maybe kind of unsatisfied. Um, and then the interesting comparison is, of course, transfers from your account to the account of the food bank. So do a little button press here. And I bet you think that everyone in the room pressed the same button as you. But it's not true. <laughs> There's actually quite a bit of variability, even in this room, in how satisfied someone might report um, feeling in that situation. And so um, when we're doing this comparison, that's really what we're interested in, is that brain response variability, just like how the behavior varies. So what we um, found when we looked at the brain systems that um, respond um, to a greater degree with costly donation versus just taking money away from your account, is that these cognitive control regions are important, as well as reward learning systems. So I'm going to focus a little bit more on that midbrain tegmentum, that juicy part of the brain. And sorry, there we go. So there was individual variability in this midbrain response in these trials, and we wanted to know what makes people different in that case. And so outside the scanner, the a couple days before, we had asked them um, a number of questions about characteristics that are part of their um, background, you know, how much gratitude they feel, what are their ethical norms. How much intrinsic religiosity do they experience? What activism are they involved with? Any recent life stress events and their life satisfaction at the moment. And then we put these into a, mo a model, excuse me, where we try to predict the amount of midbrain variability from these attributes. And what we found was that the top two predictors for this variability were their ethical norms and their intrinsic religiosity. So these are kind of values accumulated over a lifetime. And gratitude also contributed to this model, but to a lesser extent than these sort of um, bigger constructs. But what's interesting is that gratitude might be something that's a little bit more easy to manipulate, um, especially in the short term. So um, I'll give you a teaser for work to come. We're doing sort of an intervention or training study where people journal for three weeks, and we want to know if we turn up the volume on gratitude, 
does it turn up the volume on the rewarding response that you get in the brain for costly giving? So to close, I just want to try to answer this question, right? What is, what is happiness? Well, this is, there's a simple answer, sorry. Punchline, don't look. <laughs> <laughs> happiness is a warm puppy, feels good. But gratitude is something different in that it compels us to give back, even if it's just through saying a simple thank you. Thanks.